It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton. We're going to be building that Alfa Romeo that's AI design. Here it is, right here. See it? I see it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do something different this time. I normally make this elaborate build structure that I use as a measuring tool. It takes probably uh, three to five days to make that. I'm going to skip that step. And I'm going to do something different. All right, we had open space. That's step number one. You need open space. We're lucky. We've got a really level floor here. Not everybody has a level floor. The first wire form I ever did was in 1993. I, I designed a, a hot rod, and I called it the sport rod because I wanted to make a hot rod that was different than anybody else's hot rod, and I, I just couldn't come up with anything. Unless I added sports car ideas, so I called it a sport rod. Well, we needed a center line. And uh, the center line, at first, I was going to make it longer than the body. Uh, I think it was uh, 170 inches, the total length of the GTV6. So I'm assuming I'm going to make this 170 inches. And uh, I was going to make it like a foot longer on either end. But I said, oh, boy, that's going to be interfering with the the the, the uh, wires as they come around they're going to have this to deal with because it would be over here <laughs> i says i'm going to put that inside so i made it like eight inches shorter so the back of the body will be around like this and then the front of the body uh will have like eight inches overhang on it uh and we might make it a little longer we can have a little overhang on the front and, and the back more so than the gtv6 had I think this has probably got more overhang here. You know, why did we go to this height? Well, I think that we went to 60 inches tall uh, because it's a little bit, a couple inches taller than the GTV hood, a uh, roof. We're, we're using this as basically just a, uh, a rudimentary starting point for the center line. And as we develop the profile, then we'll chop this off because we don't want this on top. And, and we want the true center line, which is in the middle of this one inch uh, tube. So we'll, we'll make a little landing for the, the wire after we get them bent to sat our satisfaction. If this is the, the back of the car, this would be the roof here or whatever. We'll be cutting it a little lower and then cutting this lower and lower, depending on where the wire profile goes. And then we will add more wires. We're going to be putting uh, uh, more tubes, rather. We're putting tubes here. And we're going to measure off of them. It's all measuring off the center line. So that's the reason why we have that total length. And then we made it very square. We got a, I made a big giant square that I, I use in the shop and for general purposes. And all of these are all square within uh, 30 thousandths or so. And it's just MIG weld together. It was very simple to make. Give it a little 45 reinforcement with some three-quarter uh, square here. And a little piece of uh, one-and-a-half-inch, eighth-inch uh, leg angle iron down here. What we have now is we have the space, but we developed a tool. This is a, a tool, just like if you're doing drawings, you have construction lines. If you're doing uh, old-school uh, mechanical drawings, not CAD drawings. Even CAD drawings, you'll put... Uh, construction lines in and we have of course we have a, a, a super volunteer frank who's no longer with us other than the cardboard frank but we still love him and he's going to be in all our videos and we know he's up there in heaven watching this and, and laughing his ass off so and this is the car that we're going to be doing and frank will help out as much as he possibly can and this is an ai alfa romeo design that Mark uh, created using midjourney.com. We have a video showing you how to create these cars uh, using that midjourney program. And uh, I've done, I think, six or seven wire forms uh, in the shop since I've been in this shop, which has been nine years now. And the system I had before was I built a really elaborate structure that was on casters that you could move around and stuff. And I had to do that because uh, I needed all the space. If I had 10, 12 students coming in, I couldn't have these cars in the way. 
So I had to have them on uh, basically uh, uh, the casters and a jig to move the things around. And uh, it took a while to make that uh, heavy-duty structure. And maybe Mark will put a picture up of what that looks like, too. And we used those as measuring tools. We created a box structure. And as you made the wire form, you could measure to that structure. Well, this one I wanted to economize, and I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so that anybody in a two-car garage can follow along and they can do their own AI design or one, one of the AI designs we did. It doesn't matter. There's l literally an unlimited number of AI designs. You don't have to pay somebody $10,000 to give you a rendering of a hot rod or something anymore. And uh, we've published probably about now 300 AI designs on uh, Facebook, on my Facebook page, my Racially in Facebook page. So the object here with this new system is to use this as a centerline tool. And it was pretty easy to make. It took about uh, maybe two or three hours to, to make it uh, all MIG welded together. We have a uh, carbide blade chop saw evolution. I think it's evolution chop saw. And uh, just a simple little uh, Lincoln MIG welder. And I tacked it all together and Mark has welded it all up now. And it's pretty sturdy. And this will be the basis of basically hanging the wire form or supporting the wire form. I'm trying to, to simplify, again, as much as possible this process. For inspiration, I'm going to use Scaglietti, who was uh, the, one of the premier coach builders for Ferrari. He was like right across the street from Ferrari. Started, I think, in 1951 his, his uh, coach building firm. And it was super convenient for Ferrari to bring a chassis over to Scaglietti's shop. And they would have the chassis. And what I've read, that Scaglietti didn't do drawings or anything. didn't include clay models. He just got out some wire and started forming the wire into the shape that they want. Now, these are all low-production cars. Some of them might have gone as many as 20 cars or 10 cars, but a lot of them were just race cars. And these are the most iconic designs out there. And the name Scagliati is still uh, the Ferrari mainstay coach builder now. He died, uh, I don't know, probably 10 years ago or so. And uh, the name lives on under Ferrari still. So we're doing a different system. We're going to work off the center line. And in this video, we're not going to bend any wires. We're going to start bending the wires in the next video. Do build something like this is the first line is the profile line right through the center. So I'm going to have to dope out that profile line by just looking at that picture and we'll bend the wire and it doesn't have to be continuous. It can be in pieces and we'll clamp it to here. Now the center line, these are one inch square and the center line is going to be a half inch off, but it's not an issue right now. But we'll, we'll try to arrive at a really good profile line and this is a little short, so the body will actually come out a little bit more. Uh, we're using the overall dimensions of the GTV 6 Alfa Romeo. We know because they're published online the total length, the total height, the width, the uh, wheelbase, the track of the front, the track of the wheels in the back. So all that information will be transferred here. And uh, we'll probably get some wheels set up here. And we'll do that profile line down the center of the, the hood and the roof and the, and the windshield and the front and the back. And we have to design the back because the back is not defined in this one picture. And that's one of the shortcomings of uh, AI design right now is that it doesn't give you the three views. We've been able to get sometimes uh, multiple views of the cars, but it's kind of... Uh, it doesn't happen every time. If you ask it, sometimes you might get it, sometimes you might not. But AI design is, is improving and is evolving so fast, it's very hard to predict how good it's going to get and when it's going to get that good. But I believe that we're going to see uh, CAD-quality drawings where you'll have the three views or maybe even a revolve which will allow you to have all the information. You don't have to do this artistic interpretation. But I think the artistic interpretation is a lot of fun because 
I don't have to be a slave to this design here. I can make it even better. And the way you make it better is you're going to put these lines up and you stand back 20, 30 feet and you look at it and you have this picture and you see if you've got any uh, errors in the, in the uh, execution of the lines. And, and you say, well, geez, that'd be better if you move that a half an inch. It's always a quarter of an inch or a half an inch or something like that. It, it's almost an organic process that has a life of its own once you start. It's a lot of fun. And we'll, we'll concentrate on one side, but as we make the wires, we copy the wires onto a piece of cardboard, and then we can bend the other side wires from those lines that we copied on the cardboard, and then we're going to measure off of here. So if we have a line in space over here that's coming over like this, defining the body, we'll put a tube in here, and then we'll have that in, and it'll tell you exactly where we have to attach the same wire, which is already pre-bent according to the cardboard uh, template that we made. Most of the wires are going to be flat wires. These wheel welds openings, this is generally flat from here to here, but then it starts to roll under. So you would make that, and you could make the bend of the wire from here to here. If you try to do the whole thing, it becomes very complicated. So I would bend it from here to here, weld it there, and then I'd have another wire going under the rocker and another going underneath the front. So you try to simplify it as much as possible. Uh, when we do the headlights, we'll just come down with the aluminum skin. We'll cut those headlights in later. Uh, and actually, this body is a very rounded shaped body. Uh, and it's, it's, it lends itself perfectly to the English wheel. And the only real complexity that I can see, most of this is really simple, but it's an elegant design, is that these grills and, and the center grill here, protrude out a little bit. They're sculpted out a little bit, which gives them a nice prominence and, and a good look to them. Um, so, and then uh, as far as the trim work on it, we're not going to deal with a chrome plate or so. We'll make all of that stuff out of stainless. Um, these are probably Barani wheels, and these Barani wheels can, with the tires and everything, can be $5,000 a piece. We're probably not going to do that. The windshield is going to be a, an issue. We got flat glass in the in the side glass. We got a uh, a uh, a back glass. There will be an issue, but I'm hoping to develop a database of all the different companies in the world that will make windshields, so that anybody who wants to build a car will be able to find the will find the lowest cost one, and we'll find out the process of what they want for making a custom one-off windshield or a custom one-off glass. This glass is easy. Flat glass you can get in just about any, any city. Uh, they'll have the safety glass for the windows on the side. Now we're going to use uh, the GTV components. It had uh, torsion bar suspension. On my YouTube videos, everybody suggested I should switch to uh, coilover springs, which I probably will do. And that gives them a, a lot of nice, easy adjustment for height adjustment. And we're going to use the, uh, the, the original uh, rear end uh, transaxle from the GTV. All that stuff has to be rebuilt. We'll clean it all up, re restore it and everything. You know, the whole process, we're going to be videoing everything here. Now, this is all I'm going to show today is just this simple little structure and how you can start this really complex problem for very little money. I mean, I, I printed this picture out at Staples. I think it was uh, 38 bucks or something to print that picture out. And uh, the steel content was, uh, I don't think, more than $100 for this centerline structure. And then we're going to put a bunch of outriggers on it. That might be another 50 maybe $75. And then the wire itself is three dollars and six cents. I just bought some today for a 24 foot length. Of course, the, the prices go up and down, and they're different in different parts of the country. Metal prices on steel has actually gone down. Uh, I just bought a lot of brass for a, an architectural job I'm doing, and the price of that went crazy. The brass went really high. So uh, I'm going to try to do this so it's it's uh, attainable by just about anybody that has the ambition to build their own car. 
and to do it in the most e economical and simple way possible. So I hope you liked the video, and next time we're going to be bending some wire. I know everybody's antsy to see that wire bent. They want to see the shape happen, and then they want to see the panels formed. And uh, ideally, we could have a chassis here uh, that would be just like what Scaglietti did, but we're not going to be able to do that. But we know it's a known. What We know what the, the track is going to be. We know what the wheelbase is going to be, all that. So we'll, we'll be good. And uh, all the fly in the potential ointment is if I use all those GTV6 dimensions and I don't like the aesthetics, I don't like the 20-foot or the 30-foot look, then I'm going to have to make some changes. I maybe have to lengthen the wheelbase. I might have to widen the track or whatever. And that'll have some ramifications. But I think we might be able to do it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. I hope you enjoyed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's Ray from Pro Shaper Workshop in Charlton, Massachusetts. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. Try to share this video as much as possible. We're trying to build our YouTube channel. Thank you.